All right, where I left off in the last video, we were trying to clean the edges of this, this skull, and I had selected just the black lines. So this is where we left off. And if I hit delete, I lose the exact thing I want. So instead, what I want to do is to delete everything that's outside of those black lines. So this is called inverting a selection. When I want to select the opposite of what I've selected, I can go up to the select options and say inverse. And now when I delete, it will be on the outside of the lines. And it looks really jagged because the resolution was the resolution of the original file was low. And there's not much I can do about that. But if I want to slim it down, I can click on it. It's already rasterized. Double click on the layer, not on the layer name, because that's how you would rename the layer, but rather outside of the layer name on the layer band. And you get to the layer styles. And in those layer styles, I'm going to use stroke. And I'm going to use white as my option. And instead of it being on the outside, which we use to thicken the line, we're going to go on the inside to thin the line. And you see how that cleans it up. Like so. But it cleans it up with white pixels. And those layer styles are in a drop down with the layer. So they can be turned on and off. But you see how much that thinned the lines, but also cleaned up that bumpy edge because it was low resolution. This is why we do it with black line art for this, because black line art, even if you mess up the resolution, is incredibly adaptable. And it's very important to, to digital graphics. Okay, now, if I actually want to delete those white lines and delete those pixels, I first have to rasterize them. So it's right-click and rasterize the layer style. Now, I don't have effects anymore. Those white pixels are in the layer. So then I use my magic wand with contiguous turned off, and I select the white, and then I can delete that. And then I can deselect. And layer styles take a lot of running memory for Photo P, but it will eventually do it, just be patient. And now I've got the line quality I want that matches everything else. All right, next step, I want to erase another part of the skull. I don't want this part of the skull. At any time, I can hit Command-0 to center everything. And now I just keep building. Let's see, is there other stuff I want to delete? Maybe this in here I don't need. That looks pretty good, but I'm going to get rid of this chunk in here. Actually, it's a different layer I don't like it from. It is this layer. So being able to move selections between layers is incredibly helpful. Yeah, we can kind of like that. Very tricky. And what I'm trying to do is just play with the line quality. You're not trying to preserve anything recognizable necessarily. Yeah. Now, I'm liking it for the most part. I'm going to erase away certain things still. But it's fine, I, I think, visually interesting to have some areas that are really busy and then others that are more open. But this is a little too open, right in the middle here. 
So instead of bringing in yet another asset, because I already have more than five, what I'm going to do is something called internal compositing. And I'm going to take a layer that I like, and I like this portion right here of this layer, and I'm going to lasso around it. And then instead of deleting, I'm going to copy and paste it onto a new layer. And the shortcut for that is called duplicate, and it's command J. So now I have a copy of this that I can play with, right, and move around. So I'm going to turn on everything else. And then I'm going to use this, which looks a lot like a Nighthawk's head. It's kind of cool, being our campus mascot. And I'm going to transform it. So Option Command T. I can flip it horizontally. I can rotate it. And I can kind of line it up. So that is called internal compositing. That's when you composite with pixels that you already have within the composition by making duplicates of them and using them in multiple places. Like so. All right, so this isn't perfect, but it's, it's good to move on to the next step. When I view it at one-to-one -one pixels, like I can identify any layer that looks a little weird, and this layer looks a little weird. So I'm gonna auto-select, get this layer, and what I can do is I can use layer styles and just do a color overlay to fill it all with black, right? And then rasterize that. Is there any other layer that looks weird? This one looks a little weird. So I can do that same thing. Color overlay with a layer style. This one just has some, some parts of it I don't love. So I'm going to color overlay. And that just changes everything to just black pixels. There we go. Looking better and better. And then these little stray marks I might want to get rid of. Color overlay. Often they come from pixels that aren't black. Right? Also, if you notice at the edge, I have a line of black pixels I need to get rid of. So how can I clean all of this up without having to go layer by layer so carefully? What I'm going to do is hold down Option, go to my very top layer, hold down Option, and then say Layer, Merge Down. Now when you do that, if I didn't hold down Option, it would collapse it all into one flattened layer. But because I did hold down Option, it didn't destroy my original layers. Now, to make it merge every layer together and not destroy the originals, you have to hold down Shift and select every layer that you want to merge, and then hold down Option, and then say Layer, Merge Layers, or Command E. So now, this is very helpful. If I turn off all of my building layers, I have everything flattened onto a layer at the top, which then allows me to just use my lasso and I can just clean it up directly. I can clean up the edges. I can trim any stray marks and I no longer have to hunt down which layer they belong to. I can clean up little things that bother me, no problem. And I can be as picky as I want. And if I have a tablet, I can be more and more precise about how I use these, these lines and these selections with my lasso. But this is a nice way to kind of clean it up before submitting it is to merge it all together while still having the individual layers to work with if you wanted to make changes. So it's called non-destructive editing, and that's part of professional digital art practice in compositing.
also, well, it's all merged together to clean it up instead of having to go through each layer that might have stray pixels of gray and turn them all into a different layer style and thicken them and thin them. Now I can do it all on one layer. So what do I do? Just like I have been showing you, I'm going to use the magic wand on this combined layer and I'm going to select with contiguous unchecked on the white and then delete it all. And then I just have black pixels all in one layer. I can edit out any I don't want. And if I'm at all unsure if they're clean and black, I can double click on the layer and give them all a black color overlay which will change every pixel to a solid black pixel. So that's the best possible outcome if everything looks kind of clean and what I desire in the image. Now mine's a pretty complex image. There's a lot of little things I could decide I want to change. I could round things out. I could taper things off. And that's where we'll be getting into kind of black shape design with logos and vectors. And this is just kind of the barest hint of it. Okay, but now we gotta save our work. First thing I might wanna do is just use my move tool and move it all more towards the center of my eight by 10 composition. Turn on my white background just to see how it looks on white and then see if there are any major things that bug me and fix them. Like things that look cropped off arbitrarily. Right. What have you. Or if you just want to create some shapes, you know, you can kind of cut things out. Right? because this is modifying existing pixels. This isn't drawing on your own. This is cutting out, modifying. You have that ability. Okay, so now I'm happy with it, let's say. I don't know that I am, but let's say. And now I need to turn it in. So first I save it as a PSD file. How do I do that? I've already named it, so all I need to do is say file save and it will update to where I opened it from. So save my changes. Where is that? It's right here. Next, I can't put a PSD file into the assignment in Canvas. I have to save it as either a JPEG or a PNG. Those are our file formats that are supported. And this is how you do it. Step 10, out of Photop. You go to File, and instead of save as PSD as we did before, we go to export as, and we use either a JPEG or a PNG, the top two options. JPEG is gonna fill in the empty pixels with white. And I don't have any empty pixels because I had a white background. It goes to downloads, I drag that into my folder or into, onto my desktop and I mark it orange. That's what I can put to Photoshop. Or I can turn off the background and I can say file export as a PNG. And the only difference between them, they're both online file types, is that the PNG supports transparency. So even though they're, they're flattened into one layer, the JPEG will fill in the empty space with white. The, J, the PNG will not. So it's free floating. All right. Now, how do I put it into Canvas? I just follow the directions here. Underneath the instructions, I start a reply. I put my name, the name I want to be called, and then the last name as registered. And then I put in either the JPEG or the PNG. I just need one of them. 